Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Word. In this module, I want to look at the difference between using columns or using text boxes to position things around the screen. And I'll have a quick look at tables. So there's three things I'm going to cover today, really. Columns, how to create columns, the pros and cons, how to create a text box and move it around the screen, and then how to use a table and hide the, the um, line so you don't see that there is an actual table there. But first of all, columns. Now to activate columns, you need to go to the layout tab and then you have this option, insert columns with different number of columns. Uh, I'm gonna pick three. And as long as you've got your ruler activated and you should have that on anyhow, view ruler. As long as you've got that activated, you'll see the ruler, the, the uh, ruler across the top and on the ruler, you can see each column. Now the problem with columns is, first of all, if I start typing some text, so you think you're... Now if I want to go into the second column, at the moment I can't do that until I go all the way down to the bottom of this page and it will come up to the next column. And then all the way down the bottom of that one, it will come up to the next column, which is obviously not of much use. What you have to do is you have to use what are called breaks and column breaks is what we need. So there's the breaks still on the layout page, column break, and that'll move us into the middle column. And then you can type away in the middle column. And then if you want to get into the third column, you have to do the same thing again, breaks, column break, and away you go. Off, off you go into that column, type it away. Now, let's say that you have finished doing columns and you want to go back to a normal text, a normal document. What you have to do is do another break so this time you need to do continuous break and then you have to put the columns back to one column and then that will allow you to type all the way back across the bottom there as a normal document so that's how you create columns and if you're going to use columns you do need to make sure that you do the brakes, you put the brakes on. Now, once you've created a break, as you can see, I can type anywhere now. So maybe the first thing you should do is create the break so you can just jump between each column. Now that's columns. Now to use text boxes, if I just delete this one, Control W that, I don't want to save that. Get myself a blank document, Control N. To use text boxes, you just go insert, text box, these are all pre-formatted text boxes, but I'm going to draw one, that one. Just draw a little text box. Now, the benefit of a text box is that you can obviously move this around the screen and you can have multiple text boxes. So quite a lot of people do this. I'm not a fan of this. Uh, I think it's, it shows a lack of knowledge, basically, because people don't know how to do indents. But people would put an address um, like this in a text box so that they can position it on the right side of the page, like so. Now obviously you would have to get rid of the lines on the text box, so that would be um, shape outline, no outline, so it doesn't show, but in fact it is a text box, and you can wrap a text box around in other, other objects and text as well. Now the problem with that is, this is like a mini document, you can see you've got your indent markers there, like so, it does come up with spelling mistakes. If you, let's see if I can do a spelling mistake. So it'll still rec recognize a spelling mistake, but it is independent from the rest of the document. So you've created something like a mini document within a document. I, I think text boxes are more useful for when you're doing like um, a newsletter in Word and you want to link and group text boxes like this. If I just pull that one a bit smaller. So if I do a new text box, so insert text box, I'll just draw a couple of thin text boxes so you can see how this would work. I'm just going to try and copy that um, with my control key down. So I've got my control key, I've copied it. So what you can do with text boxes, which I've shown people before, is you can create a link from one text box to another by clicking on that link and then pouring that little cup of copy, coffee in there. If I click on that one, I'll do that again. 
little cup, pour that in. So basically what's going to happen now is whatever you type into the top one, when it gets to the edge, it will wrap over. I need to do a few spaces, so it's, I need to break that one up a little bit, I think. It will flow into the next text box. So this text box, for example, um, could be on a different page or it could be on the same page, but you can maneuver it around. And again, you would, you would get rid of the lines, so there was no lines. So in terms of comparing a text box to a column, it might seem a little easier to do it like this because it's just going to flow over as long as you get them to fit on. I suppose I move that across a bit. And with that, once you take the lines off, you're not going to see the lines, so it'll look exactly the same as a a column set up but obviously it's not a column like so now if you make these boxes bigger this is where it all goes a bit wrong because that is now um let me just undo that because i had them both selected if i make that one a bit bigger that's going to pull the text back because now that it's not in overflow so this then wouldn't really work in the, in the way that a column works where you could just go click into the other one it only works if you filled up the first column and then it'll go across so once you start resizing these boxes it'll pull the text back so if you want it to lay out like a column the first one i showed you text boxes aren't really going to work um and i'm saying to you try and avoid doing this if you wanted to use a text box for doing that so this is more to do with um i want to write an article start writing it and i want the rest of it to follow through onto I'll make a few spaces there that'll pull it back into this a little bit i want this rest of this article to be on a different page so that's um, text boxes and columns now let's have a quick look at um tables so if i just get rid of all these in fact i'll just delete the document Control w not saving it Control n new with tables I think you've got more flexibility than either of those two options. So if I just do a three column table, which is then sort of representing what we had in terms of columns. So if I type away, it doesn't flow over to the next one and you can just quickly click into the next cell and type away to your heart's content. And it's not being pulled back through. Um, obviously that was a, I needed to do a word break there. And if you want extra lines, you just press your tab key, you get extra lines for a table like that. Keep pressing tab. Or you can just keep typing down if it's just one, if you just try to replicate the column feature I showed earlier on. And again, if you click that, it highlights the whole table. And then you can put no border on, like so. Now, the reason you can still see the dotted lines is because I've got view grid lines activated on the layout tab. If I take that off, and then click away altogether, you can't see that there's a table there until you click into it. Now I do tend to have view grid lines on so you can see the guides. And it's also the way to um, get address blocks on the left side and the right side, quick way of doing it. You can use tabs, but if I go insert table and do three again, so I might want to go Mr. S. Saxton on this side and then press tab tab and then mr b green on that side and then come back over to this side and press enter one two three build and lane i don't live there by the way and then tab tab go back over to there press enter and then one red road you can see how you can line things up using a table so if i just get rid of the the lines again no border so that's when you print that off if i go to um, control p for print you don't see the lines that's all you see even though it's uh, in a table so you could use this option for laying things up on a, an address but it's not ideal again because that's not right across to the well i could move this i suppose line it up a bit but the way i would always do address blocks is, is none of these ways i've told you so if i just do control w 
Don't save that. Control N for new. I would always, and I suggest you do, is use indent. So I move the indent marker across to the 11 centimeter mark, and I type my address. One, two, three, Belgian Lane. I don't live there, by the way, before anybody decides to write a letter to me. I lived there when I was 10. So the benefit of um, indents is that when you've finished, you just clear the indent. Control Q clears the indent, or you can drag the indent back across manually if you want, which I will do. And then you're ready to go. So that is how it should be laid out. It's on the right hand side of the screen, but it's left aligned. So that was a, a quick look at columns, how to navigate through columns, comparing that with text boxes, and then have a quick look at tables, and then lastly look at a little indent there, how you lay out a letter on the right hand side, right aligned on the right hand side, uh, sorry, left aligned on the right hand side. But that's the end of this session, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next bit.